In this video, let's use Civil 3D to model some curve returns. A quick tour of what we have here in the drawing is topographic survey surface, a corridor and its associated alignment, some offset alignments for the main corridor, and some connecting alignments to represent our curve returns. Something to keep in mind is that when you push a corridor, the assemblies are applied to the corridor perpendicular to the baseline. So the problem occurs that if you try to push uh, an assembly through here that had a target for widening, for instance, to push it out to these curve returns, it would be pushing it perpendicular to the baseline, so the center line, out this way, and the curve would sit in here and it would be perpendicular, which is not correct. It needs to be perpendicular to the curve return. More importantly, you couldn't do just widening. It'd have to be variable height-wise as well because the area through a curve return is a transition from its normal crown or its crown to whatever it is it needs to tie to an existing roadway. So a way we're going to do that is we're going to take and push assemblies along these corridors and seeking some additional targets to help model these curve returns. You may notice that these two areas here don't line up. It's because the primary corridor is not perpendicular to our target edge of pavement, which means the curve returns are not perpendicular. In order to do that, we broke this corridor up into more modular sections, which means we have some modular assemblies. So let's go over here and take a quick look at these assemblies. We've got the lanes only, a left lane and a right lane. We've got curb only and daylight. And then we have a lane and a curb. And these two are what we will be utilizing for our curb returns. Keep in mind, and word of caution, is that for what you're doing in this area, you need to ensure that your sub-assemblies you have are available for targeting for widening and elevations. So if you come over to your tool palettes, your sub-assembly components. You can right-click on any sub-assembly and go to Help. It will open the Autodesk Help screen telling you everything you need to know about that sub-assembly. Sub and notice that under Targets, I scroll by, this is for the basic lane, can be mapped to one or more targets, but the lane transition specifically states that it's got a target for your edge offset and your edge elevation. So for the purposes of this demo, I've used the basic transition lane for my lane in this area. So let's get started. It's real easy actually. Since we already have these alignments, we're going to add these as baselines to our corridor. So I will select the corridor. I will go to add a baseline. Let's focus on the left one for the purposes of this demo. And I'll use my pick box. Hit OK and OK to choose that profile. Now that I have a baseline, we need a region. So I'm going to add a region, choose the baseline. Now in this case, pay attention to the direction of the stations. Because depending on how this was created, the stationing could be going clockwise or counterclockwise. In our case, it is going clockwise. We need to keep that in our mind so we can choose the right assembly in just a moment. So I'm going to click to begin my region here and click to end my region there. We're going to leave that region name the same. But in our case, we actually need to choose the right, what I named right curve and lane, so that the curve will be on the to the left of the assembly insertion point. Hit OK. And I'm going to ignore targets for now for the purpose of this so that you can see what happened. So it inserted it. It inserted it at the interval, the default interval, which looks nothing like a curve. So let's edit it. Let's select it. Right click and go to modify regions. And we're going to edit the frequency. Choose inside this region. And since this is, I want it to be look more curvy, we're going to put it at a very tight spacing. 
I'm going to change it along the curves to both and do a curve increment as well and then uh, mid ordinate and hit OK. And you can see that's looking much more like a curve. Well, now that we've got the assembly in there, we've got it dropping the assembly at an interval we're happy with, we need to make it seek these two uh, alignments. So we're going to do that by editing its targets. I want to, with the corridor selected, right click and go to edit targets. Choose the region. This And this time it highlights the region, so I'll hit enter to open the target mapping dialog box. And here under offset and elevation tab, under transition alignments, I will come down here under set alignments, use my pick box, and choose the two alignments I wish to seek. Hit enter. And I want to ensure it is targeting the nearest of the offsets. I'll tell it to go ahead and rebuild the corridor and hit OK. And you can see what it's done now. Now, a word of caution when you're doing this here, I've actually clicked the region too far. So that's why it's looking a little wild. It doesn't have a target. So we'll take this and we'll pull it back to the appropriate location. And if you zoom in right here at the intersection of these two, you can notice that a template drop didn't happen. So you actually have a hole. We're going to edit our targets again. Oops. And I said edit targets and I meant to edit frequency. I apologize. We're going to modify region, edit frequency, choose the region. We're going to manually place a drop. So we're going to hit this plus icon and choose this intersection here. Shift and right click to choose my snap, and we're going to snap right here. And I'll hit enter, and you'll see that it added that station. And then I'll hit OK. And now it's got a template drop, and you've got an appropriately modeled curb turn. And that's pretty much it. I could repeat it for the southern one, but I don't think you need to see that in this video. Keep in mind that this is dynamic, so as you edit, if you had to come in and edit your profile or if you had to um, change your build up or anything, luckily by doing it this way, it is dynamic and it will update on the fly. If you like this content, please click the like button. Be sure to subscribe to get notifications as I post more content.